In this video, we're going to cover outliers and modified box plots. And so the way that we are going to identify suspected outliers is by using this rule that we're going to call the 1.5 IQR rule. Now, there is no perfect formula that works for every case um, in order to help you identify outliers. Okay. Um, in reality, we would like to know more about the data in order to help us truly identify what we would consider to be an outlier versus what we wouldn't. Okay. But if, if we don't, this is a good place to start. And this 1.5 IQR rule is actually used in creating modified box plots. And uh, let's go ahead and see exactly what the rule says. So it says anything smaller than Q1 minus 1.5 IQR is going to be considered a suspected outlier. Additionally, anything larger than 1.5 times the IQR um, will be considered in, uh, an outlier, okay, or a suspected outlier. And just as a reminder here, let me just write in IQR interquartile range is just Q3 minus Q1. Okay. All right, so down below, we're going to somewhat see a visualization of the 1.5 IQR rule and what a modified box plot is. Okay. So for a modified box plot is what you're going to do is you're going to find your um, your lower quartile or first quartile. You'll find your upper quartile or third quartile. And then you'll find your median. And so for the inner part of the box, you're going to make this in the same way um, that you're used to. Okay. Now, for the min and max, we have to do something potentially a little bit different. Okay. We need to identify if there are any essentially any pieces of data that are more than 1.5 IQR past um, or, or below the first quartile. Okay. And I want to see if there's anything larger than 1.5 IQR past the third quartile. Okay. That's right. This spot right here is our third quartile. This is our first. Okay. And so if there's nothing smaller then Q1 minus 1.5 IQR. Let me actually write that in here. Okay. Or maybe I could write it right. Um, I'm going to write it right here. I'm going to say that this value here, we got this from doing Q1 minus 1.5 times IQR. So if there is actually nothing smaller than Q1 minus 1.5 IQR, then you'll write in just the minimum value, just like you normally would in your five number summary and in your box plot. Okay. Um, but let's see what happens if there's something that actually goes past um, either Q Q1 minus 1.5 IQR or past Q3 plus 1.5 IQR. Okay. And so this is the spot for... Q3 plus 1.5 IQR. So it ends up that in whatever data set this modified box plot is summarizing, there was actually something bigger than Q3 plus 1.5 IQR. And so it is going to be considered an outlier. Okay. And so when you have an outlier here, um, you're going to, for, you can see that there's a star here. Sometimes this is an asterisk. Um, sometimes it's just an X. Sometimes it's a dot. Some uh, There are many different ways you'll see these outliers plotted. But the idea is they'll be separate from the box plot. Okay. And then you can see that since there was no maximum, no line was put here. Okay. Um, and so this number right here is just the largest number that is not an outlier. So it is possible that there could have been several outliers out here. Okay. Um, but this, this thing that makes the end here 
again, is the largest value that was not an outlier. And this here um, was our actual smallest value. There were no outliers on the lower end here for this modified box plot. All right, and so is what I want us to do is actually try to make one. So let's come down here. And uh, I'm gonna have us make or, or come up with a five number summary on our calculator first. Um, and then maybe we'll make the modified box plot both in Excel and on the TI-83 or 84. Now, if we weren't going to use our TI-83 or 84 here at all, um, is what we would want to do is reorder this list and then use our formula for locating the 25th percentile, which is our first quartile. Um, we'd want to use that formula again for the 50th percentile, which is the median. And then one last time for the third quartile, um, which is the 75th percentile. All right, so I'm going to get out my calculator. And is what I'm going to do is I'm going to type all this data in here into my calculator. So if you want to, this is a good point to pause the video so you can start typing that in. Because I've already typed it in here, but I'll show you what I would have done. I would have hit stat, I would have hit enter for uh, edit. And then this is all that data, all 21 of the values from this data set here. And remember, after you type in a number, you just hit enter um, to get or to uh, get to the point where you can enter the next number. And then you'll hit enter again, type in the next number, hit enter, and so on. Now that we have all that in here, we can go stat. We can arrow over to calc and we can hit enter on one variable statistics. If your screen looks different than mine, you can just hit enter again and you will see what you're looking for. If your screen looks like mine, make sure that it says L1 here at the top and frequency list. We didn't have one. And then you just want to hit calculate. So we've done this before. And so I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy my five number summary down. And there it is. Yeah, our five number summary is just our minimum, our maximum, our upper and lower quartiles and the median. So then uh, if we're going to identify whether there are any suspected outliers or, or not, is what we want to do is use that 1.5 IQR rule. So to get us started, let's actually uh, compute the IQR. So again, this should be Q3, which is 354.95. Minus Q1, which is 260. Point nine, and let's go ahead and get out the calculator and we'll plug that in here. So we have 354.95 minus Q1, which was 260.9. And so it's giving us 94.05. So that there is our interquartile range. Okay. Um, now we want to compute the upper and lower boundaries, or sometimes they are called the fences. Okay. But so our lower boundary should be Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR. And our upper boundary will compute in almost the same way. So it'll be Q3 plus 1.5 IQR. All right, so in our calculator here, um, let's type in, or, or uh, yeah, let's let's maybe, uh, yeah, let's let's type in Q one, which is two sixty point nine, 
And then we said we were going to subtract away 1.5 times the IQR. Okay. And that's giving us a 119.825. And uh, going in the other direction to get our upper bound um, is what we could do is we could take Q3, right, and add 1.5 IQR. And Q3 is 354.95. 354.95. And I'm going to add that 1.5 times 94.05. So I'm getting 496.025. So now that we have that lower boundary, upper boundary, or the fence, fences if you want to call them that, is what this tells us is this. Okay. Um, anything, I'm going to write it on this side, I think. Anything... less than 119.825 or greater than 496.025 is a suspected outlier. Okay. And I'll always put that word suspected because just because something um, is further than 1.5 times the IQR from our first or third quartile, it is not a guarantee that it will be an outlier. Right, so from here, um, I want to now look at my data set and actually see, are there any numbers smaller than 119? Okay. And if you look through this data set, um, the unfortunate part is it's not in order, but if you look at it very carefully, you will see that there's no numbers in here that are less than uh, 119.825. Okay. Um, however, with this 496.025, if you come look at this list, okay, um, again, unfortunately, it's not in order, but you will find that there is one number that is bigger than 496.025. It is this one right here, the 740.2. So in this case, we just have one outlier, and I should be careful. I should say suspected outlier. Okay. So let's say that. The only suspected outlier is, and let me see, it was 740.2. It's actually this maximum that we had here. Okay. All right, so now here's the next thing we need to do if we're going to make a modified box plot we need to find the largest number that is not considered a suspected outlier okay. i am telling you all that this is the only one but you actually we haven't actually made the ordered list to very carefully verify that okay. um, but it's what i want to show you all real quickly is if you do type in the data set here into excel like this if you highlight your data and you right click, um, you should be given this option down here for sort. Okay. And in fact, you can see up here, there's this thing that says AZ and there's actually a little filter and it says sort and filter. You can use that button there as well. But yeah, I can come down here to sort and then I can go uh, sort smallest to largest. And now I can actually see that, you know, our um, right, our lower boundary was supposed to be 119.825. You can see there was no number smaller than that. And our upper bound 
or the uh, upper fence was 496. And we can see the only number uh, larger than 496 was this one that we considered the outlier down here. Okay. So this 478.7 is the largest number that is not an outlier. So we'll want to come back to that. Um, or maybe, maybe I'll just copy that number right now and uh, that way we don't have to come back and look. So is what I'm going to have us do is I'm going to have us make our modified box plot. Um, and I, I was considering uh, sketching it by hand first here. I think that would be actually a good idea for us to sketch it by hand, um, just to make sure that we completely understand what's going on here. So for one, I do need a number line. So if I make myself a nice number line here, we can start with uh, labeling this or putting some tick marks down. So let's start doing that here. So I'm going to call this middle point here 200 and then the next one will be 300 and then 400. So the ones that I'm not labeling with numbers are by 50. So like this is 150 down here. This is 250. Yeah. And the reason I'm counting, by the way, from 150 all the way up to 750 by 50s, um, is I need to go from uh, what a minimum value of 164 all the way up to 740.2. So that's why I've chosen to go from 150 to 750 by 50s. There we go. All right. So we've labeled this far enough. We're again, there was nothing smaller than uh, nothing smaller than 119.825. So we have no suspected outliers on the lower end. So we're just going to put our minimum in here like normal 164. Let's go ahead and do our best to guess where 164 would be. I would guess somewhere right in here. Then our first quartile is 260.9. So remember these three things here, we're gonna make just like we would with a regular box plot. I'm gonna put those three in there. So 260.9, let's see where 260 would be. It's probably roughly here. Um, then we have 290.7 for the median. So 290, it's probably gonna be right in here. Okay. Um, our third quartile is 354.95. So let's just call that 355. So 355, that should be pretty close to the 350 mark. Okay. And so yeah, this middle part here, this is exactly how we would have made a box plot before. But now, because we do have an outlier um, at the upper end, that outlier being the 740.2, I'm going to put all outliers um, marked separate kind of from the box plot here. So again, my only one is 740.2. So that is probably somewhere right in, right somewhere right in here. And I'll just I'll just use a dot, but it, again, you'll see various symbols here. You might see an X um, there to represent the outlier, but you might just see a dot. Um, you might see a star, and so on. Okay, 
So I also need to put a dot for the biggest number that's not an outlier, 478.7. So that's going to be about right here. And just so that it's clear that this isn't the maximum value, I like to not put the vertical line there. Um, but the vertical lines all together are stylistic. You don't even have, you could put a dot there if you really wanted to as well. Okay. But is what this is supposed to really be showing us is, well, most of the data um, is here in our box plot, but we may have some outliers out here. But it's, it still should be true. Roughly 25% roughly of the data should be in this quarter. Roughly 25% should be in this quarter. Roughly 25% in this quarter. And then roughly 25% in this quarter. All right, and so this is what it looks like if we make it by hand. Um, we've already typed this data into our calculator, so we might as well see what the box plot looks like in that case, okay. so I want us to go ahead and get into our calculator here. I want us to hit second and then the Y equals button for stat plot. And we have two plots on here uh, because the last time we did this, uh, we had two box plots we were observing. We only need one this time, so I'm going to shut off the second one. So I'm going to hit enter and then just arrow over here to off. And then I'm going to go back to that screen. I'm going to hit second Y equals. And now this one says it's on, but I'm going to go ahead and hit enter here. And if I arrow down to type, there is another type of box plot here, a modified box plot. Okay. So the rightmost box plot looking one is just the standard box plot. The one here on the left is the modified box plot. So we go ahead and hit enter on that. Um, I do have my data in list one. There is no frequency list or, uh, so uh, you don't need to change these frequencies. You can just leave it there to say one. Um, and you can see, you can actually adjust the marker style here too, if you want. Okay. I'm just going to leave it like a as it is. Okay. And the last thing we need to adjust is what we call the window. So go ahead and hit window. And remember the smallest X value that we have on our graph papers, we went from 150. We actually uh, then went all the way up to 750 on our uh, number line. And we were counting by 50s. Whenever you're making a box plot, the Y stuff doesn't matter. So the Y min, Y max, it can be anything. So we'll just go ahead and we'll hit graph and we'll see our modified box plot. And remember, you can hit trace and you can move along here. And so you can see probably that these numbers would match exactly what we have. Um, but I might paste this and put this in the notes too, just so that we can see it. Let me see. There we go. Yeah, this is what it would have looked like on the calculator. And the last thing I want us to do is just take a quick peek at what this would have looked like in Excel. Okay. So our calculator gives us two options for box plots, right? Um, we have to get the box plot and the modified box plot. In Excel, it's automatically going to give you that modified one. So you can highlight your data. You can go to insert. And then this thing that looks like a histogram here, you want to hit that. And then you can actually hit the uh, box plot button down here, box and a whisker. Okay. This one down here, if you really want to get rid of it, you could. It's just saying that this is the first box plot, but there's only one, so there's no need to adjust that. Okay. Um, but I could hit delete there, so it goes away. If you want, you can change this title. Okay. Um, so. The question is, you know, do we know what our data came from here? Let's see if we can remember here. So this was, oh, this was the um, strength um, of the uh, spider silk. Okay. 
Um, so if we wanted to up there, we could maybe say, you could change the title to say strength of uh, spider silk. Um, and then you can see here that this one does run vertically okay. is one thing that's a little bit different here as opposed to ours ran horizontal. Okay. Um, I do want to point out um, a couple other things. One is our outlier is the same outlier. Okay. It, um, Excel was using the 1.5 IQR rule. However, um, as I've mentioned in the past, there are many ways to find percentiles. And so is what you'll find is if you used our percentile formula to create the box plot, it'll give you something different than the TI-84 gave us, which is also different than what we have here in Excel. But the, the more important part here is all their box plots are very similar. They all mean that roughly every quarter contains 25% of the data. Um, and uh, the last thing I want to say here is you might be able to see that little X in the middle of our um, box plot. That little X in there actually represents the mean. Okay. Um, that's the last thing I kind of wanted to say about that. So I'm just going to copy this and I'll bring it over. So that way we just have all three of our charts here um, at a glance. There we go. All right. Um, let me see if there's anything else we want to do here. I think that's it for that one. Let's go ahead and take a look at this last example. So this last example um, is actually a chart of five different um, box plots. And so this is what we have going on is down here, um, we have dominance rank. And so this is for um, macaque monkeys. Okay. And so their dominance can go from one, which is the highest dominance, all the way to five, which would be the lowest dominance. And now, um, in addition to looking at their dominance rank, we're also looking at how much aggression these uh, monkeys are experiencing. Okay. And uh, is what the deal is, and you can kind of see it here, is we can actually get some information about aggression and rank just from looking at this. You can see that the um, lower the rank, the more aggression that's being received okay and so this is aggression received per half hour okay um and there's more that we can note but let's just start off with noting the the most obvious thing which is that and so i'm going to type it i think that'll be easier than writing here okay so the lower the rank the more aggression experienced. And I'm missing a G over here. Yeah, the more, uh, the lower the rank, the more aggression experienced. Um, that's a, we can definitely see there. I also see a greater variability um, as the rank increases. And then the last thing that I kind of noticed looking at this table was this extreme outlier here. You can see that that's really far away from the box plot. Um, okay. And so is what, uh, is what I would note there is that, uh, you know, wh whichever monkey this was, uh, this monkey uh, had a very bad day or a very bad half hour if they had experienced Again, what looks to be 11 uh, aggressive events in, in, yeah, just a half an hour. All right. And so, yeah, this last one here was just to give us a, a chance to um, experiment with the, the terminology we use when we're kind of describing these um, box plots. And so that actually wraps up uh, this video.